All right, so astigmatism is a little bit more confusing because you have different ways to determine uh, what kind of astigmatism is happening and whether it's being induced or if it's actually fixing something. So we'll start out with determining the different types of astigmatism. So if you have an eye and you have your... You have the vertical line image and you have the horizontal line image. And those are determined by your vertical and horizontal meridian. So our vertical image, I'll put a little I. This is our vertical image. This is our horizontal image. They are determined by our horizontal meridian, HM, and our vertical meridian. Um, so if our horizontal meridian is stronger than our vertical meridian, then that means that we have against the rule astigmatism. So if we're on the cornea, if we're on the cornea and the horizontal is plus 65 and this is plus 60, then that means that the um, the cornea is against the rule astigmatism because there is more power on the cornea on the, um, on the horizontal meridian. And you can see that because the RX, if we were to use an RX that would correct this, you would have zero and minus five. And if we were to write that as a prescription, you would have Plano minus 5 with an axis of 90 and with this rx you would say well because it's on the 90 that they have against the rule of astigmatism because on their actual cornea the power on the horizontal meridian is stronger than what it is on the vertical meridian so we'll take a look at the images themselves so if the horizontal meridian creates the vertical line image and that comes first as in this then you know that it's going to be against the rule of astigmatism it doesn't matter if it's one inside one outside one inside and one on the retina or both inside if the vertical image comes first that means the horizontal meridian is stronger which means that you have against the rule astigmatism now, it works the opposite way if the vertical, if the horizontal image is first and the vertical image is second, then we have with the rule. And that again works the same way where it doesn't matter if it's one inside, one outside, or one inside, one on the, um, on the retina. Whichever one comes first, that's going to determine whether you have with the rule or against the rule. If both images are inside the eye, compound myopic. You have compound myopic. If they're both inside, you'll have compound hyperopic. If they're both outside, you can have simple hyperopic. If you have one on the retina, one outside or you can have compound myopic where one is inside, one is on the retina. If you were to have both of these line images on the retina, there would be no astigmatism and they would both be this would be an emetrope because they're both on the retina. This is what a normal image would look like because both of them would be together. However, astigmatism is going to put one in front of the other. And so whichever one is in front of the other that determines if it's with the rule if they're both inside, then you have compound myopic. If you have one inside, one on the retina, it's simple myopic. One on the retina, one outside is compound, or is simple hyperopic, both outside, compound hyperopic. And if you have one inside, one outside, you have mixed astigmatism. Um, if you want, you can take a screenshot of this. This just shows um, you have compound myopic where both are inside, compound hyperopic where both 
are outside. You have simple myopic where one's inside, one's on the retina. You have simple hyperopic where one's on the retina, one outside. And you have mixed where you have one inside, one outside. This also shows if it's against the rule or with the rule, dependent on if the vertical image is first, then it's against the rule. If the horizontal image is first, then it's with the rule. This is where things become a little bit more confusing because now we have to determine whether things are being induced or whether things are fixing. So if he tells you that a patient, a PT is corrected with plus two, minus one, axis 180, then we can take a look at what is induced. So if he's corrected, then that means what's induced is emetropia, which means he's going to be plus 60 on both meridians. Now, this is induced on cornea. This is the Rx, and this is patient cornea. You can do this for any of the ones where he asks what's induced, because if he gives you the Rx, then we have plus two on the 180, minus one, we add them together, so we get plus one on the 90. And in order for us to reach 60, then this would have to be plus 59, because 59 plus one would give us 60. This would be plus 58, plus 58 plus 2 would give us 60 because he is fully corrected with his Rx, which means when he wears these, he'll be 60 on both if it's a normal axial length. So then what his cornea actually is, is a plus 59 on the vertical and a plus 58 on the horizontal. We then determine that the vertical meridian is stronger than the horizontal meridian, which means that this is going to be, with the rule, astigmatism. Now, both of these are hyperopic because they both create images that are after the retina. They're both less than 60, so this would be compound hyperopic with the rule of astigmatism. We can also see that from the Rx because... If we're looking at the Rx that's correcting a patient, we know that 180 means with the rule. And that if you have both meridians are positive, then they're both hyperopic. Now, let's say he wants to know, so you're practicing on an emetrope. And emetrope wears plus 2. Minus one, so same Rx, axis 180. What is induced? So this time we're looking for what's induced, which we know that the formula is patient cornea plus the Rx equals induced on the cornea. So we have three optical crosses that we're going to add together. So they are an emetrope. That means the patient's cornea is already plus 60. They're already a plus 60 on both meridians. They are an emetrope. They then put these glasses on, or they put this contact on. Plus 2, 180, add them together, plus 1 on the 90. We then can look at what's induced on the cornea. So then 60 plus 1 is going to be 61, and 60 plus 2 is going to give us 62. So then what's induced on the cornea is we see that 62 is greater than 61, which means that the horizontal meridian is stronger than our vertical meridian, which means that this is against the rule of astigmatism. And these are both greater than 60, which means that they are both going to be compound myopic against the rule of astigmatism is what's induced on the cornea. That's the difference between what corrects and what's induced is that if it's induced, we're looking what's actually on his cornea at that moment. Whereas if we're looking for what corrected the patient, then we're looking at the patient's original cornea. And from there, we determine which meridian has more power 
That determines whether it's with the rule or against the rule. If you have more power on the vertical meridian, then it's going to be with the rule. If you have more power on the horizontal, it's going to be against the rule. If both are less than 60, then they're both going to be compound hyperopic. If they're both greater than 60, you'll end up with compound myopic. If you have one of each, then you'll have, if you have one greater than 60, one less than 60, then you'll have mixed. If you have one where it equals 60 and the other meridian is either greater or lesser, then you'll have simple with, um, con with, simple with myopic or simple hyperopic. Um, so that's how you find all those. This is just how you'll find whether it's compound myopic and then against the rule or with the rule with the line images inside the, when he gives you a drawing of it. And then this is the same thing.